We're at the fourth and final part of Lesson 13.3, and we're going to talk about determining whether events are independent or dependent. You can check the description for a link to the three previous videos and to the High School Geometry playlist. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event. We learned that in the first part of this lesson, 13.3a. Two events are dependent if the occurrence of one event does affect the probability of the other event. We talked about that in the second video. And to find the probability of dependent events, we can use conditional probability. We did that in the third part of this lesson. In many cases involving random selection, events are independent when there is replacement and dependent when there is not replacement. So picking gems from a bag without looking, just sticking our hand in, independent events would be we pick a gem, replace it into the bag, and then pick again. Because our chance of picking the same gem is the same. We put it back into the bag. Dependent events would be picking a gem, we do not replace it into the bag, and then we pick again. If we pick a gem, like this purple one, and we don't put it back in the bag, we now have a 100% chance of picking a blue one, because that's all that's left. For independent events, if we pick a card from a deck, then replacing it before we pick another card, it's going to be independent because by replacing the card, we could possibly pick that same card again, couldn't we? And our probability of picking that card is 1 of 52. We put it back. Dependent events would be picking a card and not replacing it. Now we don't have 52 cards anymore. We have 51. By not replacing the card, we can't pick that same card again, and our probability of picking a certain card is now 1 51st. The outcome for these events are dependent upon what happened the first time. So now two cards are drawn from a deck of 52 cards and we need to determine whether the events are independent or dependent. So we're going to find the probability of selecting two aces when the first card is replaced. Replacing the first card means the first selection won't affect the second selection. So these are independent. There's four suits, clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. And for the four suits, there's 13 cards of each that gives us 52 cards in a deck. To find the probability of picking an ace, replacing the card, and then picking an ace again, we'd have the probability of an ace, given that an ace was picked on the first draw. So we have the probability of the ace multiplied by the probability of an ace. And we replaced that first card, so our probability is still going to be four aces out of 52 cards for the second pick. There's four aces out of the 52 cards. We multiply that by 450 seconds, and we can cross-cancel, can't we, to multiply quicker? So we really have 1 13th times 1 13th, which gives us 1 169th. So again, this was independent. These were independent events because we replaced the card and it didn't affect the outcome of the second pick. So again, we have four suits, our clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. There's 13 cards each. We need to find the probability of selecting a face card, then a seven, when the first card is not replaced. And not replacing the first card will affect the outcome of the second selection. So these events are dependent. We didn't replace. The probability of getting a face card multiplied by the probability of picking a seven, given that the first card picked was a face card. So remember, jacks, queens, and kings are face cards. There's 12 face cards in a deck of 52, 
and there's four sevens. We do the 12 face cards divided by the 52 cards in the deck, and we multiply that by the four sevens divided by the 51 that are left in the deck after we picked that first one that we didn't replace. We multiply, and we can cross cancel, can't we? We can do, there's one four here and 13 fours here. We do 12 times one over 13 times 51, and we get four 221sts. That would be the probability of selecting a face card and then picking a seven when we did not replace our first selection. We're going to move on to 13.4, which is split into an A and a B. We're going to talk about joint relative frequency and marginal relative frequency, and then conditional relative frequency before moving on to simple event, compound event, mutually exclusive events. This entire chapter, chapter 13, was all about probability. And if you need more help, remember you can click on the description and watch any previous videos that you missed, and the entire High School Geometry playlist is linked in there. I hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.